With us is Jane Slaughter, who is an American journalist, writes frequently on labor affairs. Her writing has appeared in The Nation, The Progressive, Monthly Review, and In These Times. She's based in Detroit, and she has written an interesting piece on the topic of uh, the Vision 2025 document for Social Security, which basically suggests, Jane, first of all, thanks for being with us, and I, I secondly, are they planning to close their field offices? What's going on? They've uh, commissioned a, a study, a report, from something called the National Academy of Public Administration, which puts forward a vision of what the Social Security Administration should be like in 2025. And very high on the list is uh, that uh, everything would be automated in the sense that uh, you'd have to get your Social Security benefits completely online they want to eliminate the human factor well see here's a, a, a you allude to this in your piece but here's the problem as soon as i heard about this story i went on and tried to sign up for social security online myself and here's uh, and by the way i used to be an it person back in the okay. 80s of the the pr principles stay the same i was one of the first bloggers okay i mean i know computers okay i know the internet okay i was absolutely stymied I, it got to a point where it asked me to like check off which of the last eight addresses were yours, and one of them, I guess, was a P.O. box I used for three months in 1999, and I was locked out uh, for, oh. for 24 hours and, and, and on a security failure. And what if I needed to print a document to go to the welfare office to get emergency food assistance? Where would I be then? They are saying they're not going to do that anymore. In the past, you've been able to go to your local Social Security field office and ask them for certain documents, and they'll give it to you right there. Under the new plan, you would have to request it either through an 800 number or online, and it would be mailed to you, and so, of course, there would be a delay of who knows how long. So um, mailing something to me might take three or four days, which if, I, if I'm, for example, hungry, might be very disturbing. Um, so that's certainly a problem. Now, this uh, document is called Vision... T t now, of course, the other thing is that not everybody has access to the Internet, so, and that tends to break down along income lines, but this is a document, it's called Vision 2025. Does this mean that's what they're planning to do in 10 years, or would they be starting sooner? They don't get, get specific about that. The document is full of really... Uh, you know, this sort of uh, government ease jargon uh, that's, you know, lots of feel-good stuff. We will be nimble, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, we will be, have integrity. But when they get spe specific, they say that we will provide direct service options, that is, in person or on the phone, only in very limited circumstances. So you would have to I don't know what your circumstances would have to be to qualify for actually talking to a human being. Most people would be expected to go online. And, you know, this is, as you say, this is 11 years from now, so you should say, some people might say, oh, everybody will know how to use the Internet by then. No, there will be plenty of people in their 60s, 70s, uh, 80s at that point that do not. But uh, that's not really the, the, even the biggest factor. I would say that... Uh, it's not just whether you have access to a computer or whether you consider yourself tech savvy. Even if you are, the Social Security workers of today have been rigorously trained to know exactly how to figure out what your rightful benefit is. You have not been trained in that. They know all the ins and outs. They know the exceptions. They know the tricks of the trade, if you will. So when you go and talk to them and tell them all your life circumstances, they can figure out what benefit you are entitled to. And their experience is that when people file for their Social Security benefits only online, they very much too often end up cheating themselves out of part of their benefit. Well, you know, that is such a terrific point about all this and you know I, I actually wrote about vision 2025 a little bit myself but the piece that i missed is a piece you just 
mentioned, which is that human beings, uh, uh, you know, maybe in 11 years, artificial intelligence will be wonderful, but it's not going to be as wonderful as sitting across the street from an empathetic human being who says, by the way, Richard, you know, or Jane, you know, you're entitled to this as well, or, you know, how's your health, or whatever questions they might be willing to ask. So, uh, you know, the one thing I don't want to do here is feed the narrative that government can't do anything right. I mean, the reason why there are these problems is because Congress is starving the Social Security Administration for money, not because it's, the Social Security Administration is incredibly efficient and good at what it does, but they've they've cut its budget sharply. So uh, what should people be looking out for and maybe fighting for in terms of uh, avoiding this kind of dystopian future where we can't get our Social Security benefits very easily? Well, one thing they can do is at some quite a few uh, local Social Security offices have been closed already, including this year. And uh, if you hear any rumor that one is about to close in your area, you should join any sort of group that is protesting that. You should get your congressman on the case. You should hook up with the union that represents the Social Security workers, which is called the American Federation of Government Employees. You should make a stink to try to keep them from closing your local office. And then overall, uh, I would the, the the group that I think very highly of is called Social Security Works, and they are defending Social Security right down the line from whether it's trying to keep them from cut your cost of living to and Jane. Jane, we'll have, to unfortu- we'll have to unfortunately cut it there, but I'm delighted you mentioned Social Security Works because they're our sponsor, and they do do great work. So we'll both encourage folks to go there. And thanks so much for uh, coming on the show, talking with us about, uh, about this program. I hope you'll uh, come back again.